Hi my dear friends, welcome to my channel Biology for All. Today I would like to explain the 10th part of previous year question paper for the post year scientific also biology for science laboratory. Okay, as a lot of exams uh, are pending in Kerala PSC, we can expect the exam for this post within 4 to 5 months. So, my request is that don't delay your preparation. Okay, uh, those people uh, who are interested to join the Foreign Science Laboratory should start the preparation as early as possible. Okay, okay, and um, you know that about 16 vacancies uh, were reported in FSL, Foreign Science Laboratory. Okay, you can also expect um, up to 5 to 8 uh, vacancy further. Okay. So if you people are falling within the first 10th rank, surely you people will get the appointment. There's no doubt about that. Okay. So prepare very well. I will do my level best to uh, reach you people with the most possible topic that may ask for the examination. Okay. So let us start the question discussion. Okay. Okay, here is your question. The inheritance of which of the following shows criss-cross pattern? Option A, Leshnihan syndrome. Option B, color blindness. Option C, hemophilia. And option D, all the above. Let us understand criss-cross inheritance in brief. Okay, what do you mean by inheritance? The phenomenon of transfer of characters from parents to offspring or young one can be called as inheritance and such characters are called as inherited character okay what what do you mean by crisscross inheritance when an inheritance is said to be crisscross inheritance it should satisfy two criteria the first criteria that character should be transferred from a mother to son or from father to daughter okay the second criteria is that that character transferring mother or father should be a career. What do you mean by a career? Careers are those individuals having a particular gene capable of causing a particular disease but that gene is not expressing in them. Why? Because that character is in which condition? In heterozygous condition in them. Okay. So that they are called as carrier. Okay, remember, carriers are those individuals having a disease causing gene, but that disease causing gene is not expressing in them. Why? In order to express that particular character, the character coding gene should be in homozygous condition. But in that carrier persons, that disease causing gene is in heterozygous condition. That's why they are not expressing that particular disease. Okay. So, as far as the crisscross inheritance is concerned, when a character is transferred from mother to daughter or from father to son, such a type of character cannot be called as crisscross inheritance. If you want to call that particular character as crisscross inheritance, it should be from a father to daughter or from a mother to son. Okay, hemophilia, color blindness, Leshnihan syndrome, all these diseases are good examples for crisscross inheritance. Okay, you know that all these genes are excelling, all these diseases are excelling genetic disorders. What do you mean by excelling genetic disorder? Okay, you know that in our chromosome, um, we can gene, we can see uh, the gene which control body character and also the gene which control our sexual character. Those genes which control our body character can be called as autosomal gene and those genes which control the sexual characters can be called as sex genes. Okay. The body characters or somatic characters or vegetative characters controlling genes are located within chromosome known as autosome. Whereas the sexual characteristics controlling genes located within chromosome 
known as sex chromosomes or allosomes. You know that in human beings there are two sex chromosomes. They are X and Y. For male, it is XY in condition. For female, it is XX in condition. Okay. Maleness is controlled by XY. Femaleness is controlled by XX. Okay, now you know that the body characters or somatic characters or VTT characters controlling genes are usually located in autosomes, isn't it? But when a body character controlling gene is located within sex chromosome, such a type of character can be said to be what? Sex-linked characters. Okay, when that uh, body character controlling gene is uh, located within uh, the X chromosome, it is known as X-linked gene and such characters are said to be X-linked characters. If it is in Y chromosome, it is known as uh, Y-linked genes and characters are known as Y-linked character. These Y-linked genes are also known as holandric genes. Okay, remember holandric genes and Y-linked characters are also known as what? Uh, holandric characters. For example, hypertrichosis. That is hairy pinna, presence of hairs on uh, the outermost area, that is a pinna region. region. It is uh, usually found in males, that's why it is said to be Y-linked, okay? And these sex-linked characters can be classified into two types and they are sex-influenced traits as well as sex-limited traits. Sex-influenced traits are those traits which is influenced by or affected by the sex itself and not by the condition of gene, whether it is homozygous or heterosexual. For example, baldness in human. You know that this uh, uh, baldness is uh, commonly uh, uh, present in the uh, male. Okay, So, it is uh, mainly depending on the sex of the organism and not by the condition of the gene. Okay, such a type of uh, traits mainly influenced by the sex can be called as sex influenced trait. Okay, uh, then what even with sex limited traits? These are characters only expressed in one sex. They may be caused by gene on either autosomal or sex chromosome. Example, female sterility in drosophila. So my point is that in sex influenced traits, the genes may be present in both male and female but express only in one sex, isn't it? But in sex-limited traits, the genes are present in only one sex and express in one sex. That is the main point. Uh, let's look at the option once again. Uh, option A, Leishnihan syndrome. I already discussed uh, this syndrome in the previous discussion. Leishnihan syndrome is characterized by the accumulation of uh, uric acid and uh, those uh, patients are exhibiting what self-mutilation. They are harming uh, themselves. Okay, that's a unique feature of uh, this syndrome. It is X-linked recessive disorder. You know that color blindness as well as hemophilia are also X-linked recessive disorder. Okay, and uh, option A, option B, and option C exhibit crisscross pattern. So the correct answer for this uh, question is option D. All the above. The next question is, the DNA polymerase localized to mitochondria and is responsible for replication of mitochondrial DNA in eukaryotes is A. Alpha, B. Epsilon, C. Delta and the last option D is Gamma. You know that the DNA polymerase enzyme is the key enzyme in DNA replication. It was first discovered by a former scientist named Arthur Kornberg. Hence, DNA polymerase enzyme is also known as Kornberg enzyme. The actual DNA polymerase enzyme discovered by him was the DNA polymerase 1. Okay, and he got the Nobel Prize for this great discovery. Okay, what is the function of DNA polymerase uh, mainly? It adds deoxyribonucleotides. Okay, thereby uh, causing the polymerization of nucleotide chain. Okay. In the case of eukaryotes, the DNA polymerase are of different types. First one is the DNA polymerase alpha. Okay, it has an associated primase activity capable of synthesizing short RNA primer. You know that short RNA primer means RNA uh, strand having 10 nucleotide bases. Okay, then 
ഡി എൻ എ പോളിമറൈസ് ആൽഫ ഇസ് എ ഓൺലി എൻസ് ദാറ്റ് കുഡ് ബി ഇൻവോൾവ് ഇൻ ദ പ്രൈമർ സിന്തസിസ് ഡ്യൂറിംഗ് ദ ഇൻഷേഷൻ അറ്റ് ഒറിജിൻ ഓഫ് റെപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ സോ ദേ ആർ മെയിൻലി കൺസേൺ വിത്ത് ദ പ്രൈമർ സിന്തസിസ് ആൽഫ പോളിമറൈസ് ഇസ് ആൾസോ റിക്വേർഡ് ഡ്യൂറിംഗ് ദ എലോങ്ങേഷൻ സ്റ്റെപ്പ് ഫോർ ദി പ്രൈമിങ് of synthesis of okasaki fragments on the lagging strand okay so the main function of uh, dna polymerase alpha is to synthesize primer then it is also uh, concerned with the priming of synthesis of okasaki fragments on the lagging strand okay okay after the activity of uh, dna polymerase alpha you can see the activity of uh, dna polymerase delta as well as epsilon okay what is the role of uh, uh, dna polymerase delta Uh, it is a multi subunit polymerase and probably functions at the leading and lagging strands on the replication fold uh, their main function is mainly concentrated on lagging and leading strands of the replication fold okay then what is about uh, the dna polymerase epsilon it consists of four subunit and its precise role in chromosomal replication is uh, unclear but um, um, it is believed that Uh, their activity is restricted to the lagging strand perhaps only in the maturation of okasaki fragments okay so uh, the uh, clear role is still uh, not known but it is believed that their functional area is mainly concentrated on the lagging strand mainly for the maturation of okasaki fragments okay then what is about uh, dna polymerase gamma DNA polymerase gamma is found in mitochondria and is required for replication and repair of the mitochondria DNA okay okay all other DNA polymerase name DNA polymerase alpha DNA polymerase epsilon DNA polymerase delta they are mainly concerned within the nucleus their activity is concerned within the nucleus but uh, the case of polymerase uh, gamma dna polymerase gamma they are mainly found in mitochondria and mainly responsible for the replication and repair of mitochondria dna so the dna polymerase mainly uh, present in mitochondria and responsible for mitochondria dna replication and repair is nothing but the option d gamma dna polymerase so the correct option for this question is the option d gamma dna polymerase the next question is which statement is not true regarding oogenesis in mammals option a oogenesis commences at embryonic stage of the individual option b each primary use give rise to four ova option c growth phase is very elaborate and option d is three polar bodies are formed so you have to find out the wrong statement from this option you know that the oogenesis is the process of formation and uh, maturation of ova okay the ova is formed from cells of germinal epithelium lining of the ovary okay larger germinal cells with a bigger nucleus are called primordial germ cells okay involves production of haploid nucleus as well as acquisition of food reserves and preliminary organization of cytoplasm okay so oogenesis is simply the production and uh, maturation of ova this is a diagrammatic representation of different steps in oogenesis okay uh, when you are analyzing this diagram you can see that from the primary oocyte secondary oocyte and polar body formed isn't it okay and the primary oocyte doesn't give rise to four ova okay so now uh, we can uh, make a look at the options on second the option a oogenesis commences at embryonic stage of the individual it is a correct statement then option b each primary oocyte give rise to four ova that's a wrong statement from that diagram you know that each primary oocyte give rise to secondary oocyte and polar body and not directly four ova okay then growth phase is very elaborate okay growth phase is very elaborate and um, well developed area then three polar bodies are formed okay that is also a true statement so uh, the correct answer for this question is option b each primary oocyte gives rise to four ova that is a actual wrong statement provided in the option okay the next question is central thermoreceptors are located in a hypophysis b hypothalamus c infundibulum 
and the last option is pineal body. Okay, what are the main functions of hypothalamus? To maintain the body temperature, thirst, then appetite and uh, sexual desire like that. So in order to memorize all these functions of this hypothalamus, I have created a card, just like a poem in Malayalam. Okay. Vishapu daham suhanu bhoodi laiyamayu lasakti ushmavin nila palanam. Vishapu daham suhanu bhoodi laiyamayu lasakti ushmavin nila palanam. These are the main uh, functional roles performed by hypothalamus. And there is no doubt about that the thermal centers, central uh, temperature regulatory centers are located on where it is on hypo thalamus okay so central thermoreceptors are also located in where hypothalamus hence the correct answer for this question is option b hypothalamus let us move to the next question the most accepted link between krebs cycle and electron transport system is option a electrical option b physic osmotic option c chemical conformational and the last option is chemiosmotic okay you know that the, the respiration which is taking place in the presence of oxygen can be called as aerobic respiration and the aerobic respiration involves the following step first one is the glycolysis second step is the oxidative decarboxylation third step is the Krebs cycle and the last step is the terminal oxidation or oxidative phosphorylation okay uh, you know that the glycolysis is the uh, partial breakdown of six carbon containing glucose into two molecules of three carbon pyruvic acid so the end product of glycolysis is two molecules of pyruvic acid as soon as the two molecules of pyruvic acid formed in aerobic respiration they enters the next step oxidative decarboxylation these two molecules of pyruvic acid undergoes oxidation as well as uh, decarboxylation that is the removal of carbon dioxide uh, to form a two carbon compound known as acetyl coenzyme A. This acetyl coenzyme A then enters the Krebs cycle. Okay, and uh, in Krebs cycle, this acetyl coenzyme A uh, get converted into carbon dioxide plus water. Okay, and uh, during all these processes, we can see the production of high energy compound, namely NADH and FADH2 okay but the body uh, cannot utilize this or cell cannot utilize uh, these uh, NADH and FADH directly so they have to convert into their respective ATP okay one molecule of NADH will give rise to three ATP and one molecule of FADH2 will give rise to two molecule I already uh, said that point in the previous discussion okay so in order to produce uh, the ATP from high energy compounds such as NADH and FADH, this NADH and FADH2 enters uh, what electron transport system. The process which is taking place in the electron transport system is known as terminal oxidation or oxidative phosphorylation. Why it is called terminal oxidation? Because it is the last step of aerobic respiration. Why it is called oxidative phosphorylation? Because in that particular process, the phosphorylation is coupled with oxidation. That is the production of ATP is coupled with oxidation, hence the name oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, so uh, when we are analyzing the aerobic respiration, the glycolysis takes place in cytoplasm or cytosol. Oxidative decarboxylation takes place in where mitochondrial matrix and a Krebs cycle takes place in where again mitochondrial matrix and uh, the electron transport system are located and the thermal oxidation takes place in where it is in the inner mitochondrial membrane especially in a particular structure known as oxisomes or F0F1 particles okay so here the question is that the most accepted link between Krebs cycle and electron transport system Okay, in, in, during Krebs cycle, you know that high energy compounds such as NADH and FADH2 are produced. So, you know, to convert this NADH and FADH2 into their respective ATP, it has to end up by electron transport system. Okay, in electron transport system, you can see the mechanism of formation of ATP. That is 3 ATP from one molecule of NADH and 2 ATP from one molecule of FADH2. Okay, and the mechanism of formation of ATP production 
or the mechanism of formation of ATP during respiration also during photosynthesis is well explained by a hypothesis known as chemiosmotic hypothesis. This chemiosmotic hypothesis was first discovered by or first proposed by whom? Peter Mitchell and he got Nobel Prize for this great work. So, uh, the connecting link between Krebs cycle and electron transport system from the given option is chemiosmotic hypothesis okay which explains the mechanism of formation of ATP. To uh, explain chemiosmotic hypothesis we require the following component a semi permeable membrane, a proton uh, a gradient, then a proton pump and finally the enzyme ATP synthase also known as complex 5. Okay to produce ATP what are the requirement? The uh, proton gradient what is a proton gradient difference in the concentration of H plus ion is known as proton gradient. Okay, and also require a semi permeable membrane which allows the entry of certain selected molecule. Then, what, what proton pump? In order to pump a proton from a region, one region to another region, a pump is required. Usually, the pump is F0F1 particle or oxisomes. Then, uh, then what is requiring an enzyme ATP synthase or ATPase enzyme? It is also known as complex 5. Okay, what is the role of that enzyme? The, uh, this enzyme catalyzes the addition of inorganic phosphate to ADP to, to form ATP. That is, inorganic phosphate joined with ADP to form ATP in the presence of enzyme ATP synthase or ATPase. In respiration, this ATP synthase or ATPase enzyme comes under the complex 5. Okay, so chemiosmotic hypothesis is a hypothesis put forward by Peter Mitchell to explain the mechanism of formation of ATP during respiration as well as during photosynthesis okay for this uh, um, for the production of ATP uh, the following components are required what are the components a, a proton gradient is a semi permeable membrane a proton pump and finally the enzyme ATP synthase okay so the correct answer for this question is the option D chemiosmotic Thanks for watching. The remaining part of the discussion will be uploaded at the earliest. The links for the previous discussion they are uploaded within the description box. Okay. If you people are really benefited with my videos, so please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe my channel. And also don't forget to press that bell icon. Then you will be notified with each and every video when I upload it. Thank you so much. And keep in touch and stay safe and prepare well. Thank you once again.